Good morning, friends. Welcome to our service at BBC, the second Sunday of 2023. I trust that you've had a wonderful Christmas with um, your family and friends and with your loved ones. And also that you will have an immense 2023, a year of tremendous blessing. And my prayer is that this year will supersede all that have gone before. So as we have our call to worship this morning, let me read from Psalm 92. It is good to praise the Lord and make music to your name, O Most High, proclaiming your love in the morning and your faithfulness at night. To the music of the ten-stringed lyre and the melody of the harp, for you make me glad by your deeds, Lord. I sing for joy at the works of your hand. How great are your works, Lord! How profound your thoughts! Senseless people do not know, fools do not understand, that though the wicked spring up like grass, and all evil doers flourish, they will be destroyed forever. But you, Lord, are forever exalted. Father, thank you that we can now come to you and say that you are exalted forever. Amen.
Lord, we come to you today and thank you for carrying us through 2022, often through turbulent times, through uncertain times, through times for so many of great pain and suffering. And we acknowledge that us being here at the beginning of 2023 is just an act of grace. And so we thank you for your grace. And Lord, as we go into 2023, we pray that the God who carried us through 2022 will be the same one who will carry us forward because we continue to live in uncertain times. We acknowledge that we need you, that without you, we can do nothing. Lord, we pray for our nation. We pray that you will come and turn around the fortunes of our people. We pray for wisdom today, wisdom for our leaders in government, our leaders in all spheres of society, our leadership in church at BPC. And we pray especially for Pastor John that you would give him wisdom as he shepherds this congregation. And so, Lord, we pray as we stand on the cusp of this new year that you will carry us in your arms. In Jesus' name, amen.
The first reading today is from Genesis chapter 6, verses 5 to 14. The Lord saw how great man's wickedness on earth had become, and that every inclination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil all the time. The Lord was grieved that he had made man on earth, and his heart was filled with pain. So the Lord said, I will wipe mankind whom I have created from the face of the earth, men and animals and creatures that move along the ground and birds of the air, for I am grieved that I have made them. But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. This is the account of Noah. Noah was a righteous man, blameless among the people of his time, and he walked with God. Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Now the earth was corrupt in God's sight and was full of violence. God saw how corrupt the earth had become, for all the people on earth had corrupted their ways. So God said to Noah, I am going to put an end to all people, for the earth is filled with violence because of them. I am surely going to destroy both them and the earth. So make yourself an ark of cypress wood, make rooms in it, and coat it with pitch inside and out. The second reading is from the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 7. By faith Noah, when warned about things not yet seen, in holy fear built an ark to save his family. By his faith he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness that comes by faith. This is the word of God. I've had the privilege in the second half of 2022 to speak at a few funerals. I'm not sure if it's a privilege really. It was not something that I was looking forward to because these were close friends of mine who had passed on again just indicating to me the fragility of life. The last person whose funeral I spoke at was in November, and I had just read Hebrews chapter 11, verse 4. It says this, Abel, though dead, yet he still speaks. And of course, in Hebrews chapter 12, it talks about the witnesses that are witnessing as we are still running our race and encouraging us. And so I I spoke on that verse. And as I read further through Hebrews chapter 11 and came across verse 7, where it talks about Noah, I did a bit of a study on Noah and thought if Noah was here today, what would he say to us as we enter 2023? I think he would say one person can make and be the difference. One person can make and be the difference. Sometimes we can feel overwhelmed by the challenges of our times. And I think we can all agree that 2022 was a challenging year for us, economically, politically, socially, On so many levels, it was a challenge for us. The uncertainty of our times, even as we enter this new year. But in the midst of this, one person can and be the difference. I think he would say it is possible to go against the flow. Genesis chapter 6 verses 5 to 7. We have an account here of just how bad things were back then. You know, we all know that human beings, they are the pinnacle of God's creation. And yet the Bible says in this passage that God created the fact that he made them and in fact, that his heart was greatly troubled. God's heart must be greatly troubled today. What we do to each other, 
what we do to his creation. And it is just, I'm sure God's heart must be troubled at the amount of young children that are being abused, that are being trafficked right now. The moral society, uh, the moral fiber in our society has been challenged like never before. Just think socially, politically around the world. In many countries, there is a sense of hopelessness. I have the privilege of traveling around a little bit. And my friends, it is sad that in some countries, people have lost hope. Right now, there are so many conflicts around the world. And just think of the tremendous impact of the Russian war in Ukraine, not only on Eastern Europe, but across the world and what it has done to food security. Economically, uh, it is widely predicted that in 2023, we will go through a global recession. But just as in Noah's day, when God said, but Noah, so I trust that God will be able to say of us, but so and so, because one person can go and stand against the flow and stand against peer pressure to conform to societal norms and values. Friends, we live in a day of social media and bullying on social media and where we are called upon to conform. But I trust we will be able to stand. And also, as we've entered this year, one of the things that I've noticed about South Africans is many of us are giving in to a sense of pessimism and even cynicism. May that not be so, because what we can make and be the difference. One person. It's interesting. If you look at history, Texas became a state by one vote. The Americans speak English today and not German after the American Revolution because English was voted in by one vote. And so they speak English today. Well, sort of English, but they, you get what I mean. They speak English. John Wesley, who founded the Methodist Church, when he saw the circumstances around him, he said, by God's grace, I'm going to be that person. William Wilberforce, when he was confronted by the issue of slavery, he said, I, how can I just sit idly by? I am going to do something. In December, I was in Atlanta, Georgia, in the U.S., um, with our global leadership team. And while we were there, we visited one of the ministries we partner with, we are involved in. And it was, it was a fascinating experience. We went to a place called Clarkston, just outside of Atlanta, where thousands of immigrants and refugees live. And, I, and we came across a lady who had been with OM some years ago. She remembers me and she remembers Kathy doing some ministry where she was training them. And um, she's back now in the US, involved in her church. And as she looked at the plight of the refugees, she was stirred to do something. And so Denise is a name. She is just a, uh, a very creative person. She um, bought the house, had no money, where she could, could invite Iranian and other uh, immigrant women to come and she would teach them to sew 
and she would teach them to make bags, right? So she would go to factories and she would get offcuts, both of cloth, but also of leather, the most beautiful leather. And she would get these women who were often abused women to make these wonderful, beautiful products. And then they would stitch a small card on the inside and the testimony. So the name of the person would be on there and also their picture and their story. And these women receive 80% of what that item is sold for. So it is more than a fair wage and they are being given dignity. But this woman, Denise said, I can be the difference to these women. Secondly, he would say, when God says it, you can take it to the bank. From verse 13 onwards, it says, Noah believed God. He believed God when God told him to build an ark, even though he had not experienced rain prior to this. Isn't that amazing? I guess that is what faith is. And as Hebrews chapter 11 verse, verse 1 says, faith is the confidence of what we hope for, the evidence of things not seen. When God is in it, we can tackle anything that comes our way. As someone once said, God said it, I believe it, and that settles it. In fact, Jesus said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will never. I believe some, I, I remember some years ago, still living in Pretoria at the time, I was the leader of OM South Africa, and we had paid so much rent and, and our leadership team felt, hey, we need to purchase our own. But we had no money, our own building. So we went to look at the place. It was a plot just outside Pretoria and it's now in the center of Pretoria. And we sensed as we were standing there praying that the Lord said, this is your place. So we said, we don't have money, but we're going to trust God, right? Long story short, we were able to purchase the property and we had all the money we needed. Now, that doesn't always happen. I fully accept that. But we had the money because we dared to trust and believed God. Noah believed God. And it says this about Abraham. Abraham believed God and it was counted as righteousness. But thirdly, I think, he would say age is only a number. Think about this. Noah was 600 years old when he had this encounter with God. 600 years old. We have so many examples throughout Scripture that tells us that age is just a number. Think of the boy with the two, with the two loaves and the fishes. Think of Abram, who was 75 years old when he set out. Moses, who was 80 years old when he was sent back to Israel. Caleb was 85 when he said to Joshua, give me this mountain. This tells me that anyone can make a difference. We shouldn't be limited by age or gender, by culture by the fact that we may be a one talented or a multi talented person, anyone can make a difference. I was telling you that recently I was in the US and as I was visiting with a friend of mine who was retiring from OM, 70 years old, um, at the end of this year, he said to me, I am now having my encore. Yes, I will slow down but I will still be involved. This is my encore. You know, when the, the curtain has dropped and then the curtain goes up again and, P, and the performers come out and they perform again. 
And I loved that attitude. I think I've shared this with you before. OM was started as a result of an old lady who couldn't move out of a flat, but she prayed every day for kids across the road where the local high school was, that not only would they come to know the Lord, but that God would use them. And of, God, of course, God called George Verwer. So it doesn't matter the age. I think of the tremendous work that organizations such as Youth for Christ, Scripture Union, Youth with a Mission, that they are making using young people um, locally, but also across the world. Age is only a number. Don't let age hold you back. And then he would say, do not be afraid to do something for the first time. Just think about this. Noah built the first boat. He built the first boat. He didn't even know what a boat looked like, but he, but he thought, I'm going to do this, right? And my friends, those of us who are getting a bit older, it's easy for us to grow complacent, to play it safe. Let me ask you this question. Well, to all of us, actually, when last have you done something for the first time? As we have entered a new year, maybe it's a good time to start a new hobby, a new activity. How about a new attitude where we dare to hope and to dream to not give up on life, on others, or even on God? Viktor Frankl, who was a prisoner in a Nazi prison during the Second World War, wrote from a prison cell, the last of the human freedoms is the ability to choose one's attitude in any given circumstance. We can choose our attitude. And as I close, what were some of the characteristics of Noah? that made God say, but Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. Firstly, and, the, and you'll find these verses in, or, or these thoughts in verse 9 of chapter 6. Firstly, it says he was a righteous man in right standing with God. Of course, we know that we are only righteous because of what Christ has done. You know, when our kids were little, we taught them three things. Well, we taught them many things, but three things in particular. Do your best, do what is right, and always be grateful. Do what is right. It is not always easy to do the right thing. Joseph ended up in a prison, Daniel in a lion's den, and Jesus on a cross. But we are to do the right thing. Secondly, it says he was blameless. He was a person of integrity. Someone once said, men and women of genius are admired. Men and women of wealth are envied. Men and women of power are feared. But only men and women of character are trusted. He was blameless. And then it says he walked with God. I used to have a sign on my desk that said the person who walks with God always gets to their destination. He was in communion with God. And it's just to walk with God. You know, I think sometimes we complicate the Christian life so much. I think what God requires of us is just to walk with him day by day. And then lastly, he was obedient. Verse 22 of chapter 6 uh, of Genesis. It says he did everything just as God had commanded. 
Stephen Alford, well-known Bible teacher, always used to say, bring your obedience up to date. As we enter 2023, is there something you know God has been speaking to you for a long time now and you have put it off? So if Noah was here in 2023, what would he say to us? I think he would say, we and one person can make and be the difference. D.L. Moody, most probably one of the greatest evangelists of the last century. When he listened to a message on Ezekiel chapter 22 verse uh, 33, where it says God was looking for a man to stand in the gap. He said, by God's grace, I will be that man. The Lord bless you. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you and your loved ones today and in this year. The Lord bless.